Welcome to the Cinematologist Podcast. I'm Neil Fox. Today's episode is a short one, and it's to celebrate the release of Gary Huswit's documentary Eno, which is in cinemas in the UK today. And I really enjoyed talking to Gary, who has made a film that, as the interview makes clear, would have been a perfect addition to the thesis of my recent book when discussing the idea of filmmakers taking a cinematic approach to a musical subject which kind of honours the spirit and creativity of the artist in question. And for those of you who don't know, Eno is a generative film, so no one will ever see the same film twice. So when you watch it, a programme draws from the archive of material that they've collected that sort of talks about Eno's life and his live performances and his work and also interview shot for the film and yeah they're in a different order and loads of different sort of clips pulling from loads of different places will make up the narrative of the film that everybody watches and it will never be the same twice which is a remarkable remarkable idea in any sense but also perfect for a kind of curious and generative and iterative creative person like Eno so it seems like the perfect way to test out this idea of generative filmmaking for this subject um i hope to talk to gary more at some point we had a really nice chat uh, and rather than putting this out as a bonus i wanted to put it on the main feed because i really enjoyed it and the film is out and i think just think people should see it uh, i haven't seen it because you can't watch a screener of it because of the nature of the film so i'm really excited to see it and uh, talk more about it and write more about it sounds absolutely brilliant and it was really great conversation so i'll be back in the next couple of weeks with two final episodes of the season which will be more standard episodes but for now please enjoy this short episode which is me talking to the filmmaker Gary Hustwit about his film Eno. How are you? I'm good, how's it going? All right, thank you. Lovely to talk to you. Yeah. I just had a book published by the BFI called Music Films which is about concert films and documentaries Um, and in it I write about how not enough music films kind of try to honor the subject through the form, you know? So like there doesn't seem to be a similar cinematic approach to this, the music and the subject. Um, and I just wondered your thoughts on that. Cause obviously the book came out in May and then earlier this year I hear about your film and I'm like, well, this is it. This is the genre as it should be. Um, <laughs> You know, because the marriage of your form to the the subject seems so so yeah. synchronous. Yeah, no, it, it 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 is. I mean, it's the really the only reason that Brian even wanted to do a, a documentary about himself. It's not like he's been you know pining for someone to you know tell his story or something. Um, but being involved in um, you know this sort of generative cinematic experiment was something that that he did want to be a part of and was excited about so yeah i know that the marriage of form and content uh on this is just bonkers i mean i i I still um you know can't believe that like we got to make the first generative feature film and then it was about brian eno it's like how perfect is that um and and yeah no i i think it's true it's hard to kind of match the the form with the, the the subject of of a film Mm. Um, it's also hard to, to make a, a you know, I, I think a music documentary that is as uh, spontaneous and performative as as music is or mm. as you know, concert is. Um, and, you know, my background before I got into film was in, in, in music, working with bands and record labels. And the first films that I uh, was part of were music documentaries. Um, and, and it's been something that has kind of been bothering me for 20 years now um, that I've been making films. Is like, why do they have to be the same every time? You know, it's a technical constraint that doesn't exist anymore. A film is no longer a physical thing that has to run through projectors and cameras. Um, so when everything is digital, why are we still kind of following the same um, rules of, of storytelling? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, it, it just seemed like a, a, a perfect way to experiment, um, with those ideas and with that approach, doing a film about, about one of the pioneers of, of, you know, generative, um, art and, and someone who's always pushed the boundaries of, uh, technology and creativity. Yeah, for sure. 
And I, I, I join to that. I wonder like how, what your relationship to the film is as a director, because obviously it's all of, a lot of the things that you would associate with directing a doc in terms of pacing, narrative, arc, and like that, that kind of goes out the window. So what's, you know, or does it? I don't know, I'm really Yeah, interested. I don't think it goes out the window, but it definitely is a, um, uh, give, it's definitely giving up control of of each individual version of the mm. film minute by minute. Um, so you're you're kind of you know you're creating a, a a a structure in which the film can create itself. So it becomes more of curating the ingredients for it to kind of for the system to pull from, um, and using our knowledge as filmmakers to kind of give the system intelligence about. Um, you know how we like to see cinematic stories presented hmm. um it's interesting that uh there a lot of what happens in eno is is programming but a lot of it is also um you know the filmmaking you know our editors and you know what the kind of pieces were and how we kind of program the system to kind of like deal with all those pieces but a lot of why I think the film works is that it's it's in our brains as viewers. Like we're making the connections that are mm -hmm. happening each time. And people come up to me at screenings are like, oh, wow, I loved how you talked about Roxy. And then the next scene was this. And like that connection was great. And I'm like, yeah, actually, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> but actually, we didn't do that. <laughs> you know, like there is no connection there. But but you if you see the connection, then then it's there. Um, it, it leaves things open um, to interpretation by the individual audience members, which is what I love about about films. You know, I don't want someone to tell me what the story is. I want I want to be able to figure that out myself. And and, and our brains are just designed to you know look for patterns and make connections and you know solve yeah. puzzles. It's what we want to do. Um, so I think that uh, this approach lets you do that every time you watch the film. You know, you're getting a kind of composite portrait of Brian. Um, it's like when you meet someone for the first time and you spend an hour with them and you, you get some information about them, you kind of put together a picture of who they are and, and what they're about and you meet them another time, you know, and then you, you get more, a, a, a deeper level of information and you make more connections. Watching this film is, is exactly like that for me. Um, you can watch it once and get something, completely get inspired by Brian's ideas and, you know, the music and, and the kind of creativity. And, and then you can watch it again and you get a different nuance. Mm. Like, like people ask me like, oh, are, is, do you have a favorite version? Like, you know, if you had to do a director's cut, what it, would it be? And that's completely antithetical to the whole approach. Like I, yes, I, there are scenes that I root for to come up every time I watch the film and I'm, I'm bummed when they don't come up, but um, it's part of the, of the process. It's like, it's not about what my, uh, ideal version of the Eno documentary is um, because what my ideal version is is different from what yours is um, so with this approach we can kind of have all of those things happening at once and um, yes it does take away some of the kind of directorial you know auteur uh, idea here but um, but after I you know I'm <laughs> to force myself to uh, to be okay with it because it, it really is um, you know what the, what this project is about yeah um, you know but the, the whole thing becomes the, the almost a directorial statement doesn't it which i think is really fascinating as as a, as a con as a concept um which i think is 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 a different it's kind of above the auteur <laughs> you know it's not about the material it's about the idea and the yeah i, I think that the, the, at some level if every if all the pieces are are great it kind of doesn't matter which you know which ones you get or what order they're in. You kind of figure it out. If you learn about Brian working with you know um, you two, or, or you learn it about it at the three minute mark or the sixty minute mark in the film, or or it's not even in there at all, you're still going to get you know so much um, great stuff. And and it does. Um, there is kind of a three act structure in the film. No matter what version you see, it's it's. Uh, something that's not necessarily um, noticeable, but it but it's there and it makes it feel like uh, kind of an engaging, you know, narrative arc, regardless of what pieces, individual pieces end up being in the film. Yeah. One of the things I think is interesting about 
music films and watching a lot of music films is thinking about how a lot of them present themselves as the only the only version of a story um not necessarily consciously but certainly there's the sense of like well this is the film about say john coltrane um and it's like well a, an art an artist and a human being as multifaceted as john coltrane should have a hundred films about yeah. them. and your film kind of liberates the audience i think from the idea that there is one there is one version of this story that could be told uh, yeah. and becomes like you say a much more much more intimate relationship with an audience who can see a story. Yeah. But I mean, I could, do, I could make a 10 hour series about Brian Eno. We still wouldn't be scratching the surface. I mean, there were 500 hours of archival footage in his um, storage space that, that we had to go through that, um, you know, and of course you, 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 you know, you're always as a filmmaker, make, you're making these choices uh, about mm -hmm. what to include and what ends up on the, you know, the, the cutting room floor, as they say. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's like, um, with this system, you don't have to make those choices. And also this whole idea of, um, the film being done, even, even this program, this software thing we've, we've made, um, which Brendan Dawes, who's a digital artist, um, based up in near Liverpool, he's, you know, the, the main reason this thing actually exists as a as a um as a program but um we keep adding to it it's never kind of done it can continue to and change i just added stuff this past week that will be in the next generation of the picture house uh versions for you know a, a week from now um so you, you can continue to kind of change it it doesn't have to be like ever you know done mm -hmm. uh, which uh, which is a whole other opens up a whole other uh, uh, realm of possibilities. Like, why can't your favorite film just evolve a little bit a year later or two years later? Why does it have to be like a sequel or something else? You know, we watch films because we fall in love with this world that they create, and um, and we come back to that world because we want to feel those same emotions and the same story. But um, I kind of like the idea that maybe you come back in a year and you know. I don't know, Dune 2, it's kind of maybe a little bit different, you know? The yeah. one scene isn't, isn't there, that, but there's a different scene, or, you know? Uh, a lot of it is, like, not about alternate endings or, or whatever, but it's about um, changing pathways through, through stories. Yeah. So what's exciting, I think, with this approach is, like, yes, it, it works, I think, with this, you know, a documentary about a very creative uh, mind. Uh, but I think we could do fiction and narrative films that are that are generative. Why can't you have a you know a Christopher Nolan film that changes every time you see it? I mean, there's a lot of filmmakers who have been experimenting with nonlinearity and chronology for decades, but now you could actually do a thing that like it it does that every time you yeah. see the film. So I think that um, wrapping our heads around this as filmmakers and kind of um, you know dreaming about okay, well. We have this capability now. We didn't have it before. Yeah. We have the capability. What are some interesting ways to use this? If that idea is baked into a film from the get-go, that it could change. How do you write that film? You know, mm. how does Jonathan Glazer write that film? Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a. <laughs> that's what I'm. What I'm excited about. I'm excited about how Eno is going to continue to evolve and getting to inspire people with Brian's story. But um, but also like, what's next for this idea? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really exciting because it because it's a reminder that um, you never watch the same film twice anyway. No one does. Yeah, you know, and you never listen to the same song twice. Like that, everything changes. That, you know, yeah, and I think that's a really that's a really liberating idea in terms of the technology, the possible, the technological possibilities. That, yeah, that this kind of storytelling does. And, and even if the film is the same, we all have different interpretations of it. You know, we all think yeah. of the, oh, that's the reason behind. No, actually, I thought it's this way. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's always different. Uh, you know, person to person, a movie experience. Yeah. So this is just kind of like you know spins that into an entirely new universe. Amazing. Um, it's an absolutely astonishing thing in the world um annoying for me to have to but i but i will be the first thing i write about if i ever get to do an updated version of the book uh, awesome 
Thank you so much for your time, much. Gary. Yeah, no, and please, if there's other, if you want to talk, I, I, I'd love to talk more about this just today as one of those crazy days with everything. But um, for sure, yeah, because I think there are bigger cinematic, you know, history. I don't know. I don't know where this fits in with, yeah. you know, cinematic history and experimental film and technology and all that stuff. You know, I just wanted to make a movie that was different every time. Um, how, how what what it how it changes things or doesn't change things or you know, um, I think is, is, is something to, to discuss and kind of like keep, keep thinking about and talking about. So, um, yeah, I'd love to talk more sometime. Great. That'd be amazing. Thank you, Gary. And good luck okay. with the release. Okay. Take care now. Cheers.